Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I have kind of a little spin on something I've seen a couple of other channels do and I will link those videos down below that I've seen do this. And this is a love it, like it, or leave it. So I'm basically going to go through all of my perfumes one by one and tell you guys which ones I like or really like, which ones I absolutely love, and if there are any that I could leave or actually will leave. So this will also be a very small sort of a mini declutter as well. This also really helps me and I find this is a nice exercise to do if you just want something comforting and relaxing to pass the time, but it also helps me put into perspective which perfumes really aren't working out for me, which ones I should avoid in the future, and that kind of thing. So I invite you guys to do the same thing and if you do, please um, let me know the link so that I can watch your video down below as well. If you haven't already subscribed, definitely head on down and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any future fragrance related content. And without further ado, let's just get started. Okay guys, so we're all set up to do our little um, challenge here, which is organizing my perfumes into piles that I like, love, or don't like. And there's not that many perfumes that I don't like because if I didn't like them, I wouldn't have them. As you guys know, I'm very, very picky about what ones stay in my collection. I'm always doing declutters and yeah as you can see I've got my coffee here because decluttering perfumes and going through perfumes is a long process and I love having coffee and I also have my little bin there which is where I'm going to be putting the perfumes that I don't like that I maybe want to declutter so let's get started so before we begin with what's in the closet why don't I quickly do my minis because there are a couple in here that I definitely want to get rid of and let's just start sorting so our um, Seven Virtues Vanilla Woods. This one I actually love, so we're going to put that in the love pile. And Clean Skin from Clean Reserve. This isn't an absolute love, it's a like. We'll put that in the like pile. Um, my little decant of Delina Exclusive. This is a love. Princess by Killian. This one is just a like, mostly because of performance issues, but it's also not a love anyways in terms of the scent itself, so that one is just a like. Um, we have Into the Night from Bath and Body Works, and this one is definitely as well just a like. It's not a love by any means. We have Kaylee Citrus, and this one I really, really like, actually. I'm gonna put that in the love pile. Not that it's like an absolute favorite, but I like it a lot more than just like it, if that makes any sense. We have Ella Rose from Maison Francis Kirk John, and this one I would say is it's a like. Um, it almost could go in the declutter pile, but I do like it more than than I don't like it, so we'll put it here. I do want to use it up and see if it's something I want to actually get a full bottle of in the future, but I'm kind of leaning toward no because it is quite a light scent. Um, we have a Nuit et Confidence from Anique Goutel. I do really like this one. And we have my two little baby uh, Jo Malone's. We have Wood Sage and Sea Salt, and we also have peony and blush suede and these ones you guys I'm gonna declutter both of these ones actually because I've tried wearing them over the last couple of days I just don't care for them like I told you guys in my last video I don't think that they're really me and I've even tried layering them together and I still didn't find that they were really me so I'm going to put those in the dislike pile and I'm going to declutter them so out of my minis and my roller balls these ones would be my three favorites, the Vanilla Woods, the First Kiss Exclusive, and the Kali Citrus, and these ones here are just likes. Okay guys, so I actually pulled my closet, or my closet, I pulled my shelf out of the closet and put it out here so that we had some better light to work with, and yeah, let's just start from the back and let's just do this. It's going to take a little while. I'm probably not going to go through all of the perfumes um, super, super in depth with like the notes and everything like that, I might give like a brief description for some of them. And I'm just gonna kinda go through and tell you guys which ones I love, which ones I just sort of like, and which ones I am gonna get rid of. Um, as you can see, I sort of have them organized as best I can by family, but I did take and put a couple in there that maybe don't go um, in like a certain group. So it's a little bit of a mess, but the hope with doing this is to declutter it a little bit and make it look a little bit more streamlined. So let's start in the back. We have Kaylee Vanilla 28. You guys know that I absolutely love this. And I think what I'm gonna do with the ones that I love and I like, I'm just gonna leave on the shelf. And for now, I'm just going to um, take off the ones I'm gonna declutter and then I'll organize it after. So I love Vanilla 28. We will definitely be keeping that one. We have Kali Deja Vu White Flower, which I also, I really like this one. This isn't a love, but I do really, really like this. So we're gonna be keeping it. 
And when I say it's not a love, I mean it's not a love compared to like the vanilla. For me, the vanilla is like ultimate. I really, really like Deja Vu White Flower though. We have Kaylee Musk, which I also love. So we're gonna be keeping that one. We have the Mont Guerlain Intense from Guerlain. This one I just really like. It's not an absolute love because I do have two other Mont Guerlain fragrances. So this one definitely is just um, a really like for me. But if anything is something I really like or love, obviously it's gonna be staying in my collection. Mont Guerlain, the original, I love. So we're gonna be keeping that one. And Mongerlan Floral, I absolutely love, 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 love. So <laughs> there should be two love categories. There should be like a love and like a super duper love. This would be a super duper love for me. So we're gonna be keeping that one as well. We have Coco Mademoiselle Intense, and this one I really like, but I don't absolutely love it. And the reason for that is I actually prefer the original Coco Mademoiselle more than the Intense one, and I kind of wish I didn't have a big bottle of this one. I wish that I would have gotten 100 ml of the original and just a small bottle or a 50 ml of the Intense, just because I do find it to be quite a lot sweeter and just not appropriate for every occasion. I really have to be in the right mood to wear this one, um, but I do like it. In front of that one, we have Chanel Number no. 19 Poudre, and I really love the way this smells. I love the way it smells at the atomizer. The only issue with this one is I don't ever reach for it, but it's so new to my collection. It's not the right time of year to even make that judgment because this is a very green, powdery perfume, and I think this will be really good um, in the springtime, so I like it a lot. I think it's very classy and um, just really pretty and powdery and soft and feminine, so this one I'm gonna hold on to obviously for a while before I make my decision. We have Coco Noir. Now this one, you guys, I'm on the fence about because I probably reach for this one less than any of my Chanel fragrances, and when I did wear it the other night, I really was kind of disappointed, and I know I'm not the only person who's had this experience. I don't find this to be one of the best performing Chanel's. It's probably one of my worst performing out of everything, and that includes all of the Eau de Toilettes. Um, and I just don't feel great when I wear this. There's something about it, I don't know. So this one, you guys, I don't know for sure if I'm gonna declutter it, but I don't love this. For now, I'm gonna hold on to it, but I do have to say that it's verging on being like a dislike. I love the scent, I just don't love the performance and I don't love how I feel when I wear it. So for now, we're gonna keep it, but that one I would probably put in the like not so good pile. Coco Mademoiselle, the original, of course I love this, you guys, and I love, love, love this. <laughs> so that one we're keeping. We have Chanel Number no. 5 Eau Premier. As many of you guys know, this is like my bedtime scent. I often wear this to bed and I really like it. You can see I've put a pretty good dent in it already, actually. Chanel Number no. 5 Eau de Parfum. I love this one, like love it. This is gonna be in my collection forever, as far as I can see for now, unless something crazy happens with my nose and one day I hate it, but for now I really, really like it. So that one's a love, that one's gonna stay. And Chanel Chance, of course you guys know this is a love for me. This is like up there with Mon Guerlain Floral. Super, super favorite, so we're gonna be keeping that one. Same thing goes for the Chanel Chance Eau de Toilette. I absolutely love this one. This is like a fruitier, more vibrant, youthful, fun version of the original. And this one's also a little bit more fresh, so I like this one for the gym. It also lasts forever. Even for being an Eau de Toilette, it lasts for a really long time. Chanel Chance um, Eau Fraiche, I also love this one. And this one has okay lasting power. It's not as good as the Chance Eau de Toilette, I think because it is a little bit fresher, but I still really like it. I actually love all of my Chance perfumes. Um, so really the oddball is just that Coco Noir that's kind of like, I don't know about that one. So I'm not gonna declutter it for today, but at least you guys know where I stand on it. Christian Dior, Dior Addict. I love this one, so we're gonna keep that one. Unfortunately, it's not one of my boyfriend's favorites. He doesn't care for that one as much as I do, but whatever, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it for now. Um, we have Armani Code Cashmere. I love this one, and this one is also discontinued, so it's kind of one that I wouldn't wanna let go of even if I was on the fence, because if I ever wanted it back one day, I'm not gonna be able to find it. We have Black Opium Neon. This one is just a strong like. I wouldn't say this is like a love, 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 must have, but it is a strong like. I really like this one. It's also a compliment getter. I get lots of compliments when I wear that one. It's just like a more fruity version of the original Black Opium, if you're wondering. I don't wanna pick these up by the lids because it's very precarious. 
L'Entredi Intense from Givenchy. This one is a like. I wouldn't say it is a love, and the reason for that is because it is quite spicy. There is black pepper in here, there's tuberose, there's vanilla, there's sesame seed, but I really get a lot of spicy um, tuberose in the opening, and although I love the mid and the dry down, sometimes the opening is a little bit much for me, so this one is a like, but it's not a love. Um, now we have Gran Ballo um, from Zerjoff. I think I included this already in one of my videos that I was talking about fails, so I do apologize if it's repetitive, but I still have it sitting in my room, so I may as well talk about it for a minute. This one I'm definitely going to declutter. This one is not one that I like. It reminds me a little bit of the Viva La Juicy perfumes, except I actually prefer a couple of the Viva La Juicy's better, as you can see. So this one I'm definitely going to get rid of. It's just... It's like a slightly more sophisticated version of the original Viva Le Juicy, which I don't love. So this one is going in the bin. Okay, we have Rolling in Love by Killian. Uh, this one is a strong like, almost a love, and it's really nice for date nights. My partner really likes that one, so we will definitely be keeping that one. Mark Jacobs Decadence. You guys know how I feel about this one. I love this one. I find it really addictive, really sweet. Um, excellent performance. I love this. The only thing I don't like about it is the bottle. Some people like the bottle. I find it very bulky. I don't like it and it scares me picking it up as well. Le Petit Robe Noir Intense. You guys know that I love this one so we'll definitely be keeping that one. That's my blueberry cotton candy sexy date night one. Um, let's do this one next. We have Girl of Now Shine from Ellie Saab. This one I told you guys I really like, but is a little bit too much on the pineapple for me. It's a little bit too sweet, and I don't like how I feel when I actually wear this one. I much prefer the original Girl of Now for this one. I like the way this smells at the atomizer, but I don't like the way it smells when I put it on. So this one is also going in the bin. Um, Alien Essence Absolute. What can I say about this one? You guys know I love it. This is absolutely staying. That is like a more vanilla cashmere version of Alien. Um, we have Noir Pour Femme from Tom Ford. I wouldn't say this is a love. It's not one that I fall head over heels for or anything like that, but this is a strong like. So this one we're definitely gonna be keeping. Um, same thing with Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense. This one is also a strong like, but it's definitely not a love, love, love. I like, when I first bought this, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world and I still think it's a really nice scent but for some reason I don't reach for it as often as I thought that I would and um, I really really like it but I wouldn't say it's a lifer it's not like absolute love or anything like that I definitely have nighttime perfumes that I prefer over that one which is a shame because I have such a big bottle of it <laughs> Ariana Grande REM. You guys, this one really surprises me. This is probably my most, if I had to play a game and put it in like the most surprising category, this is my most surprising fragrance of 2020 because I honestly didn't think I was gonna like it. This is a salty lavender, slightly gourmand, um, sort of a sexy skin scent. I like wearing it to bed, but I like wearing it for date nights actually even more. I like it for like Netflix and chill, intimate nights, that kind of thing. It, is one of my favorites, honestly. I try not to wear it too much because I don't want to use it up and I'm trying to give all the other perfumes a fair chance. But this is actually turned out to be one of my favorite, favorite perfumes. It is so sexy, it goes over so well. Compliments, my boyfriend loves it, like he goes crazy over this. So yeah, REM is actually a favorite. Um, Narciso Rouge. This one, you guys know, is a love for me. This one frequently makes it onto my most complimented list, my top 10 for life, my best nighttime scents. Yeah, this one is a, a keeper for sure. We have Poison Girl Eau de Parfum from Christian Dior, and this one is a very, very strong like, almost a love, very strong like, so we're definitely gonna keep that one for sure. Hypnotic Poison, this one is also a very strong like. I'm not gonna say it's a love because I'm no longer head over heels in love with it the way I used to be many, many years ago, but it is still one of my favorite vanilla perfumes. It's one of my favorite winter perfumes. So yes, that is a strong like. This beautiful girl over here, La Nuit Trésor à la Folie. I love this one, you guys. I actually really love this one. This is such a beautiful, pink, flirtatious, gourmand vanilla scent. Um, it's very new to my collection. I've hardly worn any of it. In fact, I've only worn it once because I think I got it literally about a month ago. 
and I can't recommend it enough. It is such a sweet, sexy, flirtatious, feminine scent. Just really, really beautiful. We'll definitely be keeping that one. Behind that we have Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle. This one is a very strong like, um, pretty much a love, but I don't fall head over heels for it, but it's a very, very strong like. So we'll definitely keep that one. Zara Rich, Warm, and Addictive. This one, unfortunately, you guys, I like the way it smells, but I think it would smell better on a man than it does on me, or even on another woman. I just don't really like how I feel when I wear it. I find it leans a little bit masculine, and I just don't really enjoy wearing this one. I think it's a really nice fragrance, and it's also really good for the price. Um, you get a huge bottle for a really small price, and it is a really beautiful scent. I can see why so many people love it, but I'm going to be putting this one in the declutter bin. Okay, can make room for some things here. Organize them. Okay, um, let's go to the back. I'm scared to pick this one up because the lid always falls off and I'm doing this with one hand. So this is Viva La Juicy Bodacious. This one is a very kind of tropical coconutty version of the original Viva La Juicy. It's very sweet, it's very young. This is probably the youngest smelling perfume I have in my collection. It's very flirtatious um, and men really seem to like this one. This is one of my boyfriend's favorite perfumes on me. That is the only reason I keep it. So. I can't even say that this is a strong like for me. Um, it's okay, but if it wasn't for um, like knowing that it works so well for date nights and stuff like that, I would not keep it. So, but I'm going to be keeping it because I do wear it, and you know it's got a time and a place. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say about. Viva La Juicy. This is Viva La Juicy Gold Couture, and I actually love this one. I love this one for myself. I love it for dates. I actually really, really like this one a lot, so that is a strong like. We'll obviously be keeping that one. Michael Kors Midnight Shimmer. You guys know I love my Michael Kors Midnight Shimmer. It's a woody vanilla with a little bit of amber and lots of compliments, and it lasts forever, and I really, really like that one. Van Cleef & Arpels Orchidée Vanille. I don't talk about this one enough. I really love this scent. It's a beautiful vanilla. It's one of my favorite vanilla scents. And yeah, this is a love. So we will definitely be keeping Van Cleef & Arpels Orchidée Vanille. Mancera Roses Vanille. This is another one that I love, but I do have to take it in small doses. I will say, now that I've actually had a chance to wear it, I've noticed that it can be very strong. Like, if I do more than one or two sprays, I do get a headache, so I do have to be careful with it. It is very, very strong, but it still remains one of my favorite scents. So, this one is a love. Love by Killian. This one, I'm not gonna say that I go crazy about. I don't go, like, head over heels, but I do really, really like it, so this one is a strong like and we will be keeping that one. In front of that one, we have Olympia Intense from Paco Rabanne. This one is a strong like. I wouldn't say it's a love because I do prefer the original, but this is amber and vanilla and salt, and it's really, really good. I actually, I like that one more than I like Love by Killian, to be honest. In front of that one, we have Sarah Jessica Parker Lovely. You guys know I love this. I don't even have to say it because obviously I'm using the bottle up. And I use this one to go to bed. It's just my favorite go-to for nighttime before I go to bed. So I love that one. And in the front, we have Paco Rabanne Olympia, the original. This is a love, 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 love. <laughs> so this one I'm definitely keeping. That is way up there on my list. Then we have Replica Whispers in the Library. This one is a strong like. I love the way this smells, but I love the way it smells in the air more than I do to wear it, if that makes any sense. Um, it's a really nice woody vanilla, but it definitely does have that old library smell, that like old building, books, whatever. And so I really like the way it smells, but I think it's because if I was to walk into a building that smelled like that, I would really like the building. But I don't know if I want to smell like that all the time. So yeah, when I've worn this, it's been sort of just okay to wear, but I still love the way it smells. So it's sort of like halfway a like and halfway a love for me. Behind that, we have Livia Belly Clat, and this is a strong like. Um, Come on, focus. This is a strong like. I wouldn't say that this is an absolute love, but I do really like it. And behind that, we have La Via Belle Intense, and this one I would say is a love. I really do like how I feel when I wear this one. I like the notes. I like the way it smells. This is like a more intense version of La Via Belle, but it also has hazelnut and whipped cream. So 
beautiful, um, very good for the cold weather, really good for date nights. I really, really like that one. Casablanca from Swiss Arabian. This one, you guys know I told you I wasn't probably gonna keep, and I apologize if I already talked about it in my last declutter video, but this one definitely is um, a declutter because I find that it's a little bit too apple-y for me. It's a little bit too much like caramel apple, but then there's also some strong woody notes, and I just don't love this as much as I thought I was going to. And I compared it to Midnight Shimmer because they kind of smell a little similar, but I love Midnight Shimmer way, way more than I love this one. So this one is going in the donate pile. And the last one on this shelf is Zadig and Voltaire. This is her, and this is a strong like. I really, really like this one. It's not an absolute love. I have been wearing it a lot. You can see I've already used up quite a good percentage of the bottle in the first couple of, well, first month since I've had it. And also my boyfriend loves this one. So this is a, a strong like for me. So that concludes the top of our shelf. So everything that has remained on the top shelf here is either a love or a like. And like I say, there's a couple I'm kind of on the fence about and that would be those two Chanel ones, but I'm gonna have to give the Poudre some time and the Coco Noir I'm not quite ready to part ways with yet, but those two are kind of like just teetering on being not so good. So let's start on the bottom shelf and we're gonna start on the left here. And as you can see, I have a couple of body sprays in the back and then I have a bunch of perfumes. The body sprays I'm gonna keep because they're brand new, so I'm not even gonna talk about them. Um, but let's just start at the back and work our way to the front. So in the back here, we have Mansara Holidays. This one, you guys, I talked about, um, I think when I did a fragrance battle video and I said that I much prefer Guerlain Terracotta over this one. This is a really nice um, tropical vacation type of a scent. It's got a lot of aquatic notes. It really does smell like seawater sort of. It's like seawater, TR flower, coconut, um, and it's nice and it has great performance, but I don't like it as much as Guerlain Terracotta and something about that seawater in there kind of rubs me the wrong way. So this one I'm actually going to declutter. Next we have Hermes Eau de Mervais. This is an Eau de Toilette. And this is actually the first um, perfume, the only perfume actually that my boyfriend has bought me. So he kind of picked this out on his own. He really liked the way this smelled and he offered to buy me a bottle. So it's kind of special for me. I do really like it. It's a woody orange fragrance. It's very sparkling. It's very good for the summertime. So I will be definitely keeping this one. Then we have Le Petit Robe Noir Au Fraiche from Guerlain, and I really, really like this. You guys know that this is one of my favorite fresh scents. It's got some nuttiness to it. It has a little bit of cherry in there. It still has a lot of that original Le Petit Robe Noir DNA, but it gives it like a fresh soapy vibe, and I really like this one. So that one is staying for sure. This one here, Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere from Philosophy. This is an eau de toilette. It doesn't last very long. It doesn't have a very big presence. And for that reason, I like to wear it to work actually, because even if I just spray a small amount under my clothing, nobody can really smell it on me. I can pick it up sometimes, but it's more so just like, it's kind of like a deodorant almost for me. I just kind of put it on so I can use it. And I would say that this is a like, I wouldn't say it's a favorite or anything, but we will be keeping that one because it is good for those kind of days when you don't want anything too strong. Um, we have First Kiss Exclusive from Laird, and this is a dupe for Delina Exclusive. And I really, really like the way this smells, but I think I will declutter this one because I have the real Delina Exclusive. So this one I am going to declutter. Next we have Rouge Malachite. Now this one, you guys, I think I've talked to you about before and told you I was kind of on the fence about this one. This one has been made very, very popular. I think. I think thanks to Demi Rawling. Um, this is from the Armani Privé collection. And this is basically um, like a white floral with a little bit of a herbaceous kind of an opening. There's some sage in here. There's benzoin, it's kind of resinous. It smells a lot like Alien Fusion, which I actually prefer to this one. And you guys, I've had this for now, I think like three months or something, two or three months, and I just can't get with it. I just don't wear it, I don't reach for it. I like it and part of me wants to like it, um, but I just, I don't wanna force myself to wear something. Like if I don't love it, I don't love it. So this isn't even really a like for me. Like it is, but it's not, it's not even a strong enough like that I reach for it and wanna wear it. So I am going to declutter the Rouge Malachite from Armani. 
So beside that one, we have Ellie Saab, Girl of Now, the original. I really, really like this one. It's not an absolute love. I don't think it's a lifer or anything like that, but this is one of my favorite, as you can see, my favorite grab and go perfumes when I'm just heading out the door, don't know what to wear, wanna smell good. It's a very sweet, kind of a nutty perfume, and I do really like that one. We have Prada Infusion de Amande, if I'm saying that properly. This is the almondy smelling um, infusion fragrance from Prada. People keep telling me to try the Iris one, and I do really wanna try the Iris one, but I don't wanna blind buy it currently, but I think I would like that one better. This one, is a really beautiful soapy almond smell. It kind of smells like an almond biscotti, um, but I don't like wearing it. That almond comes through way too much on my skin and I just don't care for it. So it's kind of been sitting underneath my bed for a while. I just put it out here for the sake of the video, um, but I am going to be decluttering this one. Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. I don't have to say anything about this one. You guys know how much I love it. This was my signature scent a few years ago. Really sweet, really good for dates. So we will definitely be keeping Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. That is a love, love, love. Miss Dior. I don't have to say anything about Miss Dior. You guys know how much I love it. This is rose patchouli and um, orange. It's so sweet and so delicious and so beautiful. Voce Viva from Valentino. This is a really nice, um, kind of a fresh, spicy, floral, vanilla scent. It's really pretty. I have to say it's not very unique. Often I think about decluttering this one because although I really like it, um, it's just not that special and maybe it's just not my vibe. Like I like it, but it's sort of like a basic vanilla floral fragrance to me. I still much prefer something like Miss Dior. I much prefer Chloe. I don't know. I really like this. I'm not ready to let it go yet because it's a perfect grab and go perfume when I don't know what to wear because it does smell really pretty. Um, but this is definitely not a strong like or a love. It's just a like. It's okay. So one day I might be getting rid of that one, but for now it's too good to get rid of, but it's not like a favorite. Um, Chloe, I talked about Kenzo Amore, or sorry, Kenzo World Power. You guys know I love this one. This is Tonka Bean, Cypress, and Salt, and I absolutely love it. It's so good. So yeah, that one's a love, love, love. We have Dolce & Gabbana Desire The One. I don't even know if I've talked about this one yet. This one I got probably three or four weeks ago. It is discontinued. I thought that I had remembered smelling it in the Hudson's Bay like a number of years back, and I remember I really liked it in the Bay, but when I actually spray this on, it doesn't have very good performance. It kind of doesn't really have much of a smell at all. Like, is it Emmy's World of Fragrance? I'm drawing a blank, you guys. Anyway, I will put the channel and the, the channel up above for you guys. I'm totally drawing a blank. Um, but she said that this one for her, she was like, she doesn't even know what she's smelling. And I understand what she means. It doesn't have much of a presence at all. I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm smelling when I put it on. Is it caramel? Is it floral? Is it, I don't know what it is. So anyways, I'm not impressed with how this feels. So I'm definitely going to declutter that one. Um, then we have two Alien. You guys know that I love Alien. That's my Woody Jasmine and Amber perfume, one of my favorites of all time. And then we have Chloe Nomad, and this is very new to my collection. I absolutely love Chloe Nomad. This is like oak mossy, citrusy, um, like fresh, has a little bit of that barbershop vibe that I keep talking about. I absolutely love this. It also has, I think, Mirabelle in the opening, which is a type of a fruit. It's just beautiful. I, yeah, I can't say enough good things about Chloe Nomad. So all the ones that, and then in the back there, I just have um, another what's left of my refill bottle of Alien Essence Absolute because I did decant it into this bottle here. That's what that deal is about. So yeah, that's just Alien Essence Absolute. So everything that's on this shelf is either a like or a love. And probably my least favorite on the shelf in front of me is the Voce Viva and the Fresh Cream. And moving on to our last shelf. So in the very back, I do have the box that came with my Alma Wash fragrance because it is so beautiful. And let's just start left to right, shall we? So we have Delina Exclusif. You guys know I absolutely love this. It's one of my favorite, all-time favorite rose scents. It smells like creamy, vanilla, woody rose. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't get enough of this. I love it so much. Then we have Blondine from Versailles, and you guys know I absolutely love this one as well. This is a leather and butter, and uh, I think there's orchid in this as well, so it's like a very smooth, 
cozy, leathery, buttery scent. It's delicious, it's unique, I have nothing else like it. Um, one of my favorite niche scents that I have. I kind of have most of my niche scents on the shelf here. Um, in the back, we have Kenzo Amour. This one I would say is a strong like. I wouldn't say it's an absolute love because I did wear it a lot and I kind of got a little bit sick of it, but it's a beautiful scent. There are scents I like more though, so this is just a really strong like for me. This is like um, a tea and rice powder and floral, sort of a powdery vanilla scent, and I really, really like it. In the back, we have Versace Versense. This is an eau de toilette. This is a very fresh fragrance. It bears some resemblance to Chanel Chanso Fraiche, except this one, as I've mentioned, doesn't have that classic, um, sophisticated vibe that I get with my Chanel fragrance. And they're, like I said, they're too similar, but this one's just not as good as the Chanel Chanso Fraiche. So because they're so similar, like if I didn't have this one, I'd probably keep the Versense. But because those two are so similar and I just don't like this one as much, I'm going to declutter this one. Okay, moving along. This is a very long process, so congrats if you've made it this far. We have Valentina Poudre from Valentino. I love this one. It's discontinued, unfortunately, but this is a beautiful tuberose powdery scent. Um, very sophisticated, smells a little bit like makeup, and I just love it. So that one we're going to keep. And Daisy Oh So Fresh. This one I told you guys was like a very nostalgic perfume for me. This is what I was wearing many, many years ago when I was going through a lot of life changes and a lot of stress. And it's really, it reminds me of being a lot younger and it doesn't always make me feel very good when I smell it. It's kind of strange. So I don't know if I'm really going to be reaching for this one. It's a beautiful scent, but I really don't reach for it. And <laughs> I have so many perfumes that there's no point in keeping something if I'm not going to be reaching for it. So I think even though this is a really beautiful fragrance and I thought that I wanted it back, I think I will declutter this one. I'm going to be real cutthroat today and just declutter what doesn't get worn. Um, next we have Mon Parfum Cristal from M. Mikalef. You guys know that I really, really like this one. It's a beautiful, sweet, toffee, um, Bulgarian rose scent, and I do really like it. I wouldn't say it's a love. It's not like head over heels, but it is a strong like, so we'll keep that one. We have Terracotta Le Parfum from Guerlain, and I absolutely love this. This is, yeah, this is a strong like to a love. This is a um, coconutty and tiar flower, um, and I think there's sandalwood and vanilla. It's just a very creamy, like beachy tiar flower scent. It smells a little bit makeup-y and a little bit powdery, and like I said, I do really prefer this to Mansara Holidays, so we'll be keeping that for sure. In front of that one, I have another beachy one. This is Bronze Goddess from Estee Lauder, and I really, really like this one as well. This is a little bit less floral and a little bit more like sandalwoody vanilla. Um, it smells a little bit more like sunscreen or suntan lotion than it does um, flower notes, but I really like that one as well. So we'll keep that one. In the front, we have Gucci Flora. This is the Eau de Parfum. And I had told you guys when I hauled this one, actually, that Back in the day, it was the Gucci Flora Eau de Toilette that I had fallen in love with, and I actually confirmed that because recently I had the chance to smell both side by side, and yeah, this is not the one that I liked way back in the day, so I kind of blind purchased this, and I wish I wouldn't have, and I am going to declutter this one. Um, it's a beautiful fragrance. It's a very sophisticated osmanthus, um, kind of a woody, summery scent. It's like a fruity floral with some woody notes, and but I just, I know I won't wear it, so this one I'm gonna declutter. And we have Narciso Poudre. You guys know I love this one. This has been in my collection for a really, really long time. Um, before I even started so-called collecting perfumes, I've had this one. And this is a very powdery, cedary, musky scent. And I really, really like it, so we're gonna keep that one. I have another kind of a beachy holiday scent. This is Aaron Hibiscus Palm from Aaron Lauder, and I really love this one. Yeah, this is a strong like to a love. I don't know if it's a lifer, but it's a beautiful coconut palm leaf um, floral summer scent, and it lasts forever. Like, out of all of my beachy summery scents, this one lasts longer than any of them. It lasts longer than both of those ones. Baccarat Rouge 540. I don't think I need to say anything about this one. Of course, I'm keeping it. It's very expensive. I really love the way this smells. It's kind of a special occasion perfume for me because it is kind of a gem and it is a little bit more expensive. So yeah, that one definitely is a love and we're going to be keeping that one. 
We have Elaine Gold from M. Mikalev. This is a strong like to a love. When I first smelt this one, it actually blew my mind. Like I was just getting into niche fragrances and I had never smelt anything quite like it. A lot of people say it smells like vanilla field. I don't know, I've smelt both of them and I get a little bit of a difference with this one. To me, this one is a little bit more sparkling, um, not just literally, but just the way it smells. It has a very luminous, like Elaine coconut vanilla sort of a special, I don't know if there's coconut, but it's got a very special sort of a tropical vanilla vibe and I really, really like it. So, And we're slowly getting to the end and in fact, I think we might be at the end. This is Love Tuberose from Amouage and I love this one. This is beautiful, it's sophisticated, this is whipped cream and tuberose and gardenia. It's creamy, it's sweet, it's floral, it's elegant, it lasts forever, it has a big scent bubble. I love it. It smells even better on the skin than it does at the atomizer and it's also brand new. So this one is definitely a love. So we'll be keeping that one as well. And I think that about does it. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed watching. I absolutely love watching people go through their entire collection one by one. There's something very therapeutic about it for me. I love hearing the bottles clank. I love listening to them talk about them. So I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoy similar videos. Do head on over and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, where you're gonna see a lot of little things that I don't share here on YouTube. And I will see you guys all very soon. Bye for now.